Okay, I had this. Okay, so hello everybody. Uh, I'm glad to welcome you today at our session. My name is Artur Kozienski. I'm I working as software uh, engineer at Intel. And this is Grzegorz, he's also software engineer uh, at Intel. And uh, today's presentation was also uh, started with Hemant from Rackspace, but he, he wasn't able to join us. And uh, we'll be only the two who will be delivering this presentation. So uh, the topic of today, today's uh, presentation is rolling upgrades. Uh, perform a schema rolling upgrade just in just one release cycle. So first of all, uh, the question is, what is the rolling upgrade? And uh, like upgrade is uh, installing new kind of software, new version of software that was already running. And uh, in the distributed systems, uh, you will. Uh, you should be able to replace one version of a software with a newer version without the disruption of uh, working, uh, for example, API serving to the end user. And uh, when, uh, will be, when you uh, turn install this version 2, uh, it should be working uh, in the same, uh, as the same with the version 1 in the same time. So, for example, when you will be serving the API, a uh, user will not see the uh, API, um, e API downtime uh, at all time. So uh, you, will, uh, you will be able to upgrade uh, from one version to another without losing any customer re requests. Uh, the, uh, the problem here is that you will access uh, the database in, with two different versions. So we need to have special case for uh, managing uh, two version, two different versions of software, uh, accessing uh, the database, new schema, new fields, uh, different type of uh, fields in, inside the upgraded database. So why does the rolling upgrades matter? It's like, uh, like I said, when you will have this rolling upgrades running, you will not drop any uh, API request from the customer, from the user of the cloud, uh, like CSP, uh, you will be having uh, no operational downtime, both at API level, the server level, and the uh, data plane level, like access to the VM via SSH or uh, VNC. And uh, uh, yeah, so it's like uh, your user won't be upset when he like. Uh, knock at your API and uh, don't, don't get its service done properly. So uh, current approach in, multi, in rolling upgrades is to do this uh, via multiple re 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 releases, like uh, at least three, two, three or even four re releases. And uh, when you are doing uh, four releases long uh, migration, uh, you got this extra cost of development uh, and extra effort from maintainers and reviewers of the code to be aware that this, this something is, uh, should be there for backward compatibility with the previous version. Uh, also the old code like, uh, for example, old column name has to be carried uh, for the multiple releases as well as uh, uh, you, you are getting the backward compatibility issues uh, for all this extended period of time. Uh, so the most uh, uh, complex, uh, uh, so what we need to um, uh, elaborate here is like uh, the complexity of changes, it's like uh, data compatibility, the data format and uh, schema changes when we are talking about database layer. And uh, also accessing uh, the, um, the data with two different versions of software on the upper layer. Okay, so before we discuss uh, the OpenStack architecture, I wanted to um, uh, introduce you to uh, other pre-existing solutions. 
uh, for intercluster communication with support for running different service versions at the same time. Uh, mm, well, how does this work? Okay. So uh, one of the first was uh, on CRPC, uh, developed by Sun uh, in the 1980s, and it was uh, actually a part of NFS uh, project. Uh, in Sun RPC, we define XDR files which contain the schema. Version numbers are incremented when functionalities change in the remote program, and uh, existing procedures can be changed or new ones can be added. Uh, at the same time, more than one version of a remote program can be defined, and the version can have more than one procedures defined. Uh, another one is protocol buffers. Uh, they don't have explicit versioning, but Google designed it in a way so that old and new services with different uh, schema uh, definitions could still communicate. Uh, to get that, depending on the implementation, unexpected data is either stored as extensions, make it internally safe, or silently dropped. Uh, and new fields should be added as optional, meaning that old data can be loaded successfully. At the same time, you should keep the fields ordering. Renumbering would break existing in-flight data. Uh, you also shouldn't change the way that any given field is stored, but it may be very case by case. Uh, another one is uh, Apache Thrift uh, from Facebook. Uh, it's pretty similar to protocol buffers, as it doesn't have explicit versioning, but still defines strict schemas. Uh, to maintain compatibility when the protocol evolves, uh, you shouldn't change the numeric, tag, numeric tags for any existing fields. Uh, and any new fields that are added should be optional. Uh, sensible default values also should be set so that new code can properly interact with messages generated by old code. And when messages are created by new code, uh, they are parsed or parsed by the old code, newly introduced fields are ignored. Uh, however, if you modify and serialize the message again, the unknown fields are serialized along with it. So if the message is passed on to new code, the new fields are still av available. Next thing to remember is that uh, non-required fields can be removed, but the tag number can be used again in updated message type, so it's common to rename the fields instead um, and tag it uh, as obsolete uh, with a prefix so that any future contributors don't, contributors don't accidentally reuse the number. And changing the, the file value is OK, but the file values are never sent over the wire. So if the program receives a message in with a particular field isn't set, the program will see the default value as was defined in that program's version of the schema. Uh, next up is uh, Erlang. Uh, which is a dis distributed com programming language and runtime system in which program state is stored in processes. So it's a dynamic language, just like Python. Processes usually send and receive data represented as tuples. Uh, it contains a simpler approach to live upgrades using records, and records are an ex extension of a tuple syntax which, with which you can define schemas. This is similar to named tuples in Python. In case of Erlang, the preferred way to extend the existing protocol is just to append new values to the end of the tuple, and it works. Uh, this gets us to the database schema definitions, because Erlang databases are uh, also stored tuples defined with rec records. And when you want to change the database schema, you should change the record definition. In OpenStack, uh, we have um, I wanted to show that in, uh, in this case, we usually have two types of inter-service communication in which we have to keep data compatibility in mind. So messages are both exchanged and stored on RabbitMQ message query, and uh, rows of data are stored in the SQL uh, database, which is another story. Uh, so you probably know uh, uh, SQL database, which uses the data definition language to describe schemas, and in the simplest case, we could approach the problem in the same way, just add new fields. But actually, this already, uh, and this actually covers uh, most of the cases. 
but uh, it's too simplistic when we want to have the possibility to remove data to, for example, en enhance performance of the database. Uh, we want to have the possibility of changing the schema in an incompatible way. There are also other things to consider, like database logs when adding foreign keys, and we did a presentation which discusses this particular problem in a previous uh, OpenStack Summit in Austin. Yes, so like I said, uh, currently OpenStack is using a multi-release uh, approach, uh, generally using version objects for uh, database access and RPC messaging and expand contract uh, uh, schema, uh, schema changes. Uh, what is version object? It's uh, Oslo library created initially in Nova and then ported to Oslo to uh, gain uh, every uh, project in OpenStack ability to use the, these objects. And uh, they store the data version to get, together with the data and, and describe it. Uh, in point uh, of time how the data is defined, uh, like uh, what's the fields, what's the, uh, what's the type of the field, like integer or string. And also it's uh, useful in RPC messaging, like you can version your uh, RPC message that is currently like sent uh, with uh, JSON dictionary and uh, have this strict versioning on the server and agent side. Uh, also, what is uh, cool about uh, version objects is like uh, they had this translation method to another version, uh, meaning when you will be upgrading your uh, server version to the newer one, and the agent will stay older in older version, and you change something in protocol, uh, exchanging the information between agent and uh, server, uh, you will be able to translate uh, newer, newer format in, on the server side and send it back to agent uh, compare, uh, containing known, known for him uh, format. Uh, of course, also what we can do inside uh, vision object is uh, uh, migration, migrate the data between one format to another one or on another format, another column, on another uh, place to store the, the information. Yeah, so, uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, keeping compatibility at uh, database SQL level, it's more complicated. Uh, it's the expand contract uh, uh, approach when you have uh, some kind of uh, DB schema defined at one release. And uh, first of all, you have this uh, expand, uh, uh, which is only additive changes to the database schema. So you are only adding new columns or uh, adding new, new fields and uh, new, new tables. And does not disturb the older version or to work. And uh, after uh, you will be, you can do this uh, expand phase on online, I guess. Uh, uh, because it's not disrupt, dis disrupting the older version of, of a server. Uh, the second part is contract phase, so it's kind of destructive changes. So we'll be removing the data, uh, the, the columns, and uh, it's not safe to run it uh, online uh, unless you will uh, move to the multi-release approach when the contract changes will remove uh, not needed data from previous releases that are existing in database and are no, no longer uh, accessed by, by any version of software that can run. In uh, OpenStack, we, uh, we are in OpenStack projects, uh, we are generally keeping the compatibility <coughs> sorry, uh, between X and X plus one, so it's one uh, release uh, backward compatible approach. And uh, after uh, you will roll to another uh, version, you can in contract phase, remove the not needed, not access anymore column or any other piece of scheme, the database schema. Uh, so the current multi-release uh, approach is like when you have this application and it's reading and writing from the from column and you would like to uh, rename it to another column name in X plus one version, you will be having uh, uh, read uh, f 
from the older one and write to the older and newer one, and you need to provide the data migration script so that in the background uh, you will be migrating in small chunks of data the, uh, from, the, from the older column to the newer one, new, new format and so on. In X plus uh, two version, uh, you will need to write from to the older column because of the X plus one is reading from it, but you can also read from the newer column because uh, also the X plus one is writing to the newer one. So we'll be, you will be having the compatible uh, data inside both columns. And the last moment when, uh, well, last, the first moment when you can release the older column is like X plus two, X plus three release because X plus two and X plus three are only using the new column only for the reading uh, purposes. So it's like uh, you can uh, have, like you, you have seen up to four releases of, uh, you know, having the, the stale, stale data, the uh, old uh, schema version inside the database to be comp backward compatible to the older version. It's uh, because of uh, when you have multiple servers, uh, uh, running on the same time, serving API and accessing the database, and you have to comp uh, make this compatible uh, to one point, uh, sorry, uh, minus one uh, release. And uh, if you would have like only one point when it will uh, access database, you can do this in two releases. So, so it's kind of depends on on uh, the project project use case. So uh, when we are talking about one release uh, approach uh, for the rolling schema upgrades, uh, you c we can like access it with, uh, address it with uh, also version objects. It's like when you have the X release and it's kind of a tenant ID is um, uh, example from Neutron. Currently in Neutron we have renamed tenant ID to project ID and uh, this uh, scenario will uh, show you how uh, we should done it if we had OVO in place, the Oslo version object in place, which we don't have right now in Neutron. So and not all of the data is using uh, OVO to uh, access the data. And uh, so in the X release, uh, you have only the tenant ID and a version object uh, with version 1.0. Uh, when you will uh, go to the X plus one release, uh, the, um, you will need to increase the version of the object, 1.1, uh, and also uh, you will need to write uh, to the older column and also read from the older column. With using the expand phase, uh, introducing the new column and also write to the project ID, which is the new column name for the tenant ID. So you are uh, serving, uh, you, you should be able to, from X release to access the tenant ID. And uh, inside the X plus one release, uh, the OVO will be serving both tenant ID and project ID uh, for uh, tenant ID for the backward compatible like uh, agents uh, for, from the uh, server agent communications. And uh, of course, there should be some kind of migration script and uh, you need to run it on the, uh, on, on the background. And uh, when you will translate all the, uh, you will, uh, migrate all the data, you can drop the old column. And uh, in this case, it's kind of tricky because you uh, will lose your X mi minus one uh, compatibility. So uh, you cannot do this like being all the time compatible with the older version uh, using the also version object only approach. Uh, and also you will need to switch uh, inside this uh, data access layer, like uh, object are using act some accessing methods, you will need to switch uh, the write and read from the older tenant ID column to the newer project ID when you will uh, apply the contract scripts, removing the older column. And of course you have the older data in the newer column. So let's see what's the so, other opportunities. Yeah, so what happens if you miss a step uh, when uh, applying this? And there can be a lot of misunderstandings when first introduced with this idea. So um, here is, for example, uh, an example. 
in this case, you start a new service which writes new data to the old and new columns so that it can still be read by the old version. But because it reads data only from the new place, uh, which with a possible fallback uh, to the old column when the data is not found, uh, it can miss an update with the old service, which the older, older service can make uh, to the row added, for example, by the new version. Uh, next is uh, another problem could result when the new version stops updating the old column while the old version still tries to read the data from it. And again, because you don't have any information about the version, uh, the older release may miss an update or even new rows added by the new version. Uh, so this is uh, the proper way that even the OpenStack CI uh, needs to test, like multi node grenade, uh, test adjacent services version running together with consideration for the aforementioned edge cases. A new idea to shorten the release cycle in which uh, developers need to keep track of changes in the data model are triggers, and this is currently considered in Keystone and uh, Glance. Uh, these are services which don't have uh, in, uh, internal service uh, RPC communication with RPTMQ. Uh, so the main uh, uh, database layer which, with which uh, we want to keep compatibility is is uh, the SQL database. And by introducing uh, these triggers, you can actually skip two steps. Mm, and the data migration part is started before the upgrade. So the layer implemented with triggers ma manages main, uh, the data compatibility, and the actual application doesn't have to switch between different patterns of accessing the data. Uh, when aligning it with the previous examples, it looks like this. So uh, when triggers are introduced and all data is migrated before the up upgrade, um, um, they make sure that the old date and newly introduced code updates and reads are consistent, have a consistent view of the data. Uh, on the mailing list, uh, there were some skeptical voices about the trigger approach. The main concern for me is that there is not enough expertise in the current Python community to maintain triggers. And one approach uh, proposed by Michael Bayer is to use SQL Chemi events, with which uh, could be used like triggers. And uh, this should be possible to make upgrades in one release cycle entirely in Python, since uh, even without events, you can place fields in SQL Chemi class under if clauses, changing the model on the fly while the application is running, which was something I previously proposed in Keystone. Uh, this doesn't take into consideration, though, that we can't modify the data access pattern in the old version of the app, so only in the new one, uh, uh, we have to uh, approach it with and cycle through four data access patterns. Uh, and only the three last uh, would be implemented in the new release. Uh, so uh, this actually could be uh, split up into a sub project like a sub-project of Keystone or Glance, the compatibility enforced data access patterns can be made totally transparent for the main project by using triggers with table views to represent data as two separate databases. So the first would connect to the first database and the second database can be created for the new version. And uh, like you see here, the uh, original developers would write schema and data migration scripts as normal on the first first part. And the, these migration scripts could then be used as documentation for creating triggers in a rolling upgrade sub-project. If you want live upgrades, you could benefit from this separate project, which would propose an alternative upgrade path. Uh, and uh, as I previously mentioned, this could be used uh, even with an older release of Keystone and Glance, which doesn't support uh, upgrades. So uh, summing up, what the operator should get uh, is uh, in either case, whichever running upgrade implementation each OpenStack uh, project considers, um, it should be as simple as downloading the new code, running expand, which can install triggers, 
roll out the new version, run contract, removing triggers or schema and data. And we want to encourage our projects to use that model from the operator's point of view. Thank you. So, any questions? If there, are, uh, if there is any questions, there is a microphone so you can speak to the microphone. from Dell EMC. Um, question um, with respect to ordering of the upgrade across uh, all of the projects uh, and is there workflow or triggering order to make sure they're all done uh, you know, in, in, in appropriate order so to mm -hmm. reduce the uh, disruption to the, to the user? Yeah, so most uh, project uh, authors take that into consideration that uh, when introducing new functionality it can uh, cause uh, incompatibilities. So uh, usually a new feature that is implemented in one release isn't uh, a cross project feature, isn't uh, available until you upgrade to the new version. So uh, you could uh, upgrade the services uh, usually in either order, but uh, the, you won't be uh, able to use that new uh, new features from this release. Yeah, so you need to be you need to be like uh, cross project compatibility. Like when you are, for example, from Nova point of view, using some kind of exchange enhance uh, feature from Neutron, you should be able to see that uh, Neutron is not yet uh, upgraded and, and not to use it and be also backward compatible with the older version of uh, Neutron. And the main concern here is uh, API compatibility. It's the HTTP API that uh, services com communicate with each other. So they usually don't use RabbitMQ, uh, but uh, for example, for notifications, uh, version objects are used. Yeah, so for example, now the Nova Neutron, Nova Cinder uh, communication uh, is using OSVIF and OSBRIC libraries, so it's kind of also version uh, communication between two services, and uh, it will be like, you know, Kata, uh, implemented in Newton to also uh, implement the OSV, for example. So if Nova can ask Neutron, uh, give me the port and uh, the version of its service, and Neutron can uh, respond with the version that is currently running. So it's kind of backward compatibility at this level, cross-project uh, integration. No. Any, any more questions? Okay, <laughs> thank you. So if not, it's okay. thanks. <laughs>